We all know that in life in an anime, perspective is absolutely everything, and I truly think the way that we connect with characters is directly through their personal experiences and stories. But what if I told you that the perspective of our main character Gon wasn't too far removed from the psychopathic clown Hisoka? Would you believe me? Well, that's what we're about to figure out starting right now. For those of you new to the channel, my name is Dill, and it's my mission to explore the very depths of all that anime has to offer. If you enjoy this content and want to support the channel, consider liking the video, subscribing, and hitting that notification bell so you never miss when a new video is posted. First, I want to say that while Gon is the main character of the series and seemingly a happy-go-lucky individual, he's actually pretty mentally detached when you take a closer look at his character. Instead, what if we were to look at Gon just like any other character that Togashi created? When you stop to reflect on this, it opens up a whole new insight that I had about the character. Being arguably one of the most straightforward characters in the series, he lives for fighting, is simplistic to his very core, sees the world in entirely black and white and couldn't care less for anyone that's not in his immediate circle. This is shown explicitly when he was learning men from Beanolt and thanked him for his time despite knowing that this dude was legitimately a serial killer. And while you can draw a lot of different comparisons for different characters throughout the story, like I've seen Gon being compared a lot to Uogen because they're enhancers and share very very similar character traits. The connection between Gon and Hisoka is one that I find to be one of the most interesting dynamics in all of Hunter x Hunter. Initially, I think that Hisoka was set out to be the opposite of everything that Gon stood for. He was essentially meant to be this alien-like figure, someone so far out of Gon's reach that he would have no chance of beating him. And I think that's what most people would see when you see these two characters upon first watch. However, looking deep into both of their characters, you truly see the nuance and beauty that Togashi put into each of these characters, making them very similar as a result. First, the two of them are incredibly childish, immature, and playful, which is clearly demonstrated by their Nen abilities. Hisoka's bunchy gum is inspired by his favorite chewing gum while Gon's Jajankin was taken directly from the juvenile game of rock, paper, scissors. Both live their lives just purely based on instinct and their desires, with Hisoka just doing whatever it is that he wants to do because he loves to do it, and Gon simply doing what he wants because he thinks it'll be fun or it's out of a necessity to survive. Additionally, both are basically sociopaths. This I believe is a lot more clear with Hisoka, but once you take a step back and look at Gon as a character, you start to realize he shares the same trait as well. But going even further to these two characters, where I think they share a lot of their similarities is the morals and outlook on life that they both have. So let's take a closer look at each one of them. As I alluded to briefly in my first ever YouTube video with my analysis of Gon Freaks, he doesn't see any sort of gray area in the world, situations are only painted in black or white. Furthermore, what influences this outlook on what's good or what's bad simply has to do with what benefits him or what interests him, something that I'm sure all of us would expect when it comes to a child. But beyond being immature, I feel like you can mostly relate to Gon to an animal as opposed to a human at times as he puts his needs before frankly anything else. And by extension, you can relate this very topic to the character motif of Hisoka. Being an antagonistic character in the verse, I think Togashi highlights him as being much more extreme when he showcases this, but the connection can still clearly be made. It's emphasized time and time again that Hisoka's actions are purely guided by the things that interest him, what he feels in the current moment and what's going to give him the biggest thrill in life and battle. Literally while watching Hunter x Hunter, Hisoka was always the character that would show up out of nowhere and I would ask myself, why the hell is he here? But upon taking a step back and thinking about Hisoka as a character, it all frankly just makes sense. Why was Hisoka on Greed Island in the first place? Because he thought it would be fun. Why was Hisoka disguised as a member of the Phantom Troop? Because he wanted to fight Krolo. Why does Hisoka continually push Gon to grow and develop? Because it furthers his interest in Gon and is something that he can look forward to once Gon hits his maximum maturity. So while we see the connection between these two, there's a slight nuance with how they're presented in each character. Gon's moral and outlook are frankly more simple, harmless, childish, and something you'd associate with someone who's a little Little more innocent. Hisoka's, on the other hand, involve violence, death, and typically tearing down whatever's in his way for him to get what he ultimately wants. And as terrible as this sounds, it makes perfect sense for Hisoka to act in this way. A man whose ultimate goal in life is to fight the strongest opponents possible is obviously going to leave a trail of bodies in his wake. 
And while I think that their morals and ideological outlook are basically the same thing, you may be asking then why didn't Gon turn out exactly like Hisoka in the end? And that has to do with their priorities in life. You see, a person's priorities play a massive role in their personality since they act on those priorities each day of their lives. You may have interesting morals or a strange outlook, but it's your priorities that truly shape you into the person you are. Gon's priority is to protect his loved ones, spend time with his friends, and ultimately track down his dad. Very realistic and reminiscent of what you'd expect from a 12 year old boy. But I want you to ask yourself, what if Gon's priorities weren't so wholesome? What if it was more sinister? This I believe is where we get to the crux of the idea that Gon is simply a slight mental shift away from becoming Hisoka. Now of course that's not all that really separates the two and there are some key personality traits that separate the two individuals. First is their men affinity and by extension how they conduct themselves in everyday life. Hisoka is a transmuter, meaning he's fickle, a composer impulsive liar, a trickster, and someone who's truly sadistic in nature. Meanwhile, Gon's an enhancer, a free-spirited, honest, and as transparent as they come individual. Now I think it's easy to understand theoretically that Gon could become Hisoka by focusing all of his energy into battle and his own desires, but practically I don't think this would ultimately play out. For Gon to do this would mean going back on everything he held dear, destroying all his relationships, and forsaking the family that he would protect with his life. The difference between these two is that while Gon is selfish for those in his immediate circle, Hisoka truly only cares for himself and his own pleasures in life. And I think that this is why Hisoka is so enamored with Gon. It's because Gon reminds him of a younger, potentially more innocent Hisoka. There are times where Gon is very fearful of battle like when he senses Hisoka's bloodlust for the first time or when he encounters Pito. But oddly, Gon thinks to himself that there's sort of this thrill to experience immortal fear for the first time. It's Gon's innate curiosity that strives for him to wish to experience that feeling one more time. While this starts as a byproduct of needing to find his father, there are countless examples of Gon living for the thrill of battle throughout the story of Hunter x Hunter until this, mixed with feelings of revenge, ultimately consumes him. A question you could reflect on could be, is this feeling Gon gets really that much different from Hisoka's outlook on life? Gon and Hisoka I believe are essentially two sides of the same coin. This contrasts greatly with Gon's friends Killua and Kurapika who essentially fight as a means to an end. Further elaborating on Gon's friends, I believe that they're the sole reason why Gon didn't turn into Hisoka. They're the guiding life in Gon's life, telling him right from wrong, showing him true care, and giving Gon lasting relationships that he would never let go of. Reflecting on this and taking a look at these two characters, there had to have been some sort of traumatic event in Hisoka's past in order for him to become the person that's so self-motivated and isolated from everyone around him. While Hisoka was most likely abandoned, Gon was showered with love from his friends, family, and inhabitants on Whale Island, relationships that Hisoka probably rejected many years ago. It's important to note that I don't think that Hisoka was a victim of his situation at all though. He simply played into all the misfortune and pain he experienced in his earlier years in life. But it's important to note that everyone has troubles and obstacles that they need to get through and Hisoka is no exception. All in all, something that I think we can take away from this analysis and Hunter x Hunter as a whole is that there's truly nothing separating good from evil, and sometimes neither side is good or evil. But rather, we're simply just a bunch of complex individuals shaped by our own traumas, events, priorities priorities, and relationships in our lives. We're all truly a product of our own environment and inherent nature. This complexity of characters and how you can truly take a step back and realize how deep a character's themes go is something that keeps me glued to Hunter x Hunter and why it's one of my favorite anime of all time. If you like this Hunter x Hunter content and want to check out more analysis of its wide cast of characters, I would love it if you checked out my playlist right here. As always, thank you to everyone for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Stay curious, anime fam. Peace.